Hello everybody, I'm Ascend Hyperion, and welcome to another episode of Understanding Forge, where we break down the complexities of Halo 5 Forge for the layman. Today, we're going to be talking about scaling. Scaling has to do with the sizes of things on your map, everything from the players, to the pathways, to the overall play space. Proper scaling is key for a good gameplay environment, and overscaling and underscaling can cripple an otherwise decent map. Let's get this episode on the road. The single most common issue people run into with scaling is overscaling, or making the map in the play spaces too big. This mainly comes from the fact that there's no real reference for size in Halo 5 Forge. The canvases are very large and some of them lack reference points in total, like Tidal, Parallax, and even Barrens. It's important we establish a reference for ourselves, something that helps us keep the players in mind while building the map. What I'm showing here is a reference for a player's size. Now, it's extremely rough, of course it's not 100% accurate, but laying this down on your map will help you keep an idea of how much space a player takes up on your map. This is just two 4x4x4 four by four by four blocks stacked on top of each other. It's nothing special, something you can make in a second and throw it on your map to keep around so you have an idea of how big the map is becoming relative to the player. Next, it's really important we understand how the players can move in the game. Halo 5 has an extended mobility system, meaning that the players have more options for movement beyond just sprinting and jumping. Let's go ahead and translate the ranges for player movement into units in Forge. A standard full jump will get you 16 units high and can be maxed out with a clamber. A standard jump will allow a player to clear 8 units high before needing to crouch jump. Players can use special techniques to increase their jump height. Here, by jumping, hovering, and crouching and uncrouching very quickly, I can gain extra height, allowing me to jump and clamber higher than before. Now let's talk about the distance that can be covered with jump and thrust combos. A standard full jump and a thrust will allow a player to travel 52 units without the need for a clamber. A full jump, a thrust, and then a clamber will allow a player to travel 64 units. Using the hovering and crouching technique shown earlier can allow a player to travel 72 units in their jump. By combining the previous technique with some extra hover time added by the ground pound and an additional boost, a player can travel 88 units in a single jump. This is a bird's eye view of what these distances look like, and it's extremely important to keep the player's movement options in mind when building your map, because they may be able to traverse it in ways unforeseen to you while building. What's more, with better understanding of how players can move on a map, you can manipulate your layout to promote certain kinds of movement as well. Next, we're going to talk about a very basic scaling recommendation for 4v4 maps in particular. Take a 256 by 256 floor piece, then combine another one halfway through it. This is the recommended size for a 4v4. By no means am I saying only build maps of this size, but if you're at a loss of where to start or want some type of guideline for yourself, this could be an extremely useful tool. You see that it does not take me very long to traverse from one side of this to the other. Player travel time and scaling go hand in hand, and we're going to talk about a quick tip for you to keep in mind when doing your layout. What you see here is the rough blockout for my extermination map. Underneath it, I actually use a singular 256 by 256 as a reference for size, and you can see that the layout is contained within that boundary. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is what's called the 3 second rule. It's a guideline for scaling and player travel time when building a map. Effectively, every 3 seconds or so, the player should have an option to divert their course, find a different path, or do something differently besides continue on the same route. This is my map Soul Rift. Watch carefully as how almost every 3 seconds, I have an option to change my course, find a new route, or do something different.
This map also applies all the principles we talked about in this video, and that about does it overall for this lesson. Now I know many of you have been asking for a video on map flow, but I wanted to tackle this kind of thing before we got into map flow, because it's a little more complex and I didn't want to throw a 20 minute video out there. Like always, like the video if you thought it was cool, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, drop your comments below, and let me know what you would like to see done in a future video. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.